Well, on Thursday evening, the 29th of July, at 10.45, BBC One presents Clint Eastwood, director. Made by the star and director of tonight's film, was working in Vienna on Firefox, a new thriller, which is also going to be reviewed in Radio 4's Kaleidoscope this Thursday evening at 9.35. Well, here on One in Two Minutes, Noel Edmonds presents the first of five programmes investigating stress, taking the strain. That's after the news headlines with Michael Burke. The Home Secretary has confirmed that an intruder broke into the Queen's bedroom at Buckingham Palace on Friday night. He was with the Queen for ten minutes. She stayed calm and summoned a footman who detained the man. Mr Whitelaw said it was a most serious failure of security. An investigation is underway and the guard has already been strengthened. In the Commons, MPs were astonished that an intruder could get so close to the Queen. Shadow Home Secretary Roy Hattersley said it was an extraordinary state of affairs. The train drivers have not heeded British Rail's appeal for a massive return to work. Even fewer turned up than on Friday. So today's meeting of the BR Board will have to decide whether to shut down the whole network or sack the striking drivers or both. The government is satisfied that Argentina accepts that hostilities are now over, so the last 600 Argentine prisoners of war are to be sent home. But Argentina's foreign minister has stressed his country hasn't formally recognised the cessation of hostilities. Two ships and the crews of Chinook helicopters used on the Falklands have come home, and Prince Charles, the Colonel-in-Chief of the Welsh Guards, attended a memorial service for the 32 members of his regiment who died at Bluff Cove. The latest uneasy ceasefire in Beirut seems to be holding for the moment. It's the sixth in the series and came into force after a massive 18-hour artillery duel between the Israelis and the Palestinians, during which 80 Palestinians were killed. The United Nations Security Council in New York has called for a ceasefire in the war between Iran and Iraq. It wants the countries to withdraw to their recognised borders. Peter Tatchell, the Labour left-winger who was rejected as a parliamentary candidate by Michael Foote, has now been allowed to stand. His views had previously been said to be anti-parliamentary. In the West Country, there have been violent thunderstorms. In some parts of Somerset, four and a half inches of rain fell in as many hours. Well, that's all from me. Good night. Well, because our earlier live broadcast from the Dorchester Hotel was longer than we expected, this, our next programme, is some 20 minutes later than published. So, now on BBC One, the first of five programmes in which Noel Edmonds investigates stress and simple relaxation methods to help in taking the strain. Taking the strain, breaking the chain reaction. Taking the strain, training to take the action. Slave to stress and under duress, then anyone cracks. Follow this guide, take stress in your stride, swallow your pride, face facts. Taking the strain, breaking the chain reaction. Taking the strain, training to take the action. We're here to explain the name of the game. Taking the strain. Shawaddy Waddy and wider lovers break each other's hearts. And from Cliff Richard's LP, I'm No Hero, this is a track called In the Night. Hello, I'm Noel Edmonds, and this is a Radio 1 programme from a Radio 1 studio in Broadcasting House in London. And I suppose it's a period of intense concentration for me, and also, when things go wrong, a period of stress. And in this series, we're going to be looking at stress, what causes it, what it does to us, and the very best way to cope with it. And each week, we're going to be looking at our own simple way of helping you to relax. But let's start off with looking at the causes of stress, the actual symptoms, and the way in which some people manage to recognise the stress in their own lives. The stress is there. There's no getting away from it, the stress is there. You have problems with stress. Um, you get home at night, perhaps, especially if it's raining, say. You spend six, seven hours behind the wheel when it's raining. The windscreen wipers are going continuously backwards and forwards. Your head aches, you know. Uh, your eyes feel like they're crawling out already. You just want to get home, and then you've got to drive home in the traffic. Mm. Uh, it does. It does. You find, I do find sometimes it's, it, it takes a lot out of you. It's one of the hardest jobs I know, really. By the end of the day, the stress is there, just as in any other job. 
the time of day you have most to do, um, dinner to get and children are tired and baths to be sorted out, your husband comes in, we'd all like to be able to sit down and have a nice cup of tea and sort out the day's problems, but uh, truthfully, at that time of night, I have had it to hear, and I really don't want to know about anybody else's problems. All these delicate manual procedures have to be done with these continual deadlines, one after the other after the other. And quite often the patient doesn't particularly want the treatment doing that's being done, so that throughout every day we're dealing with a number of patients, all of whom have different anxieties about dentistry, and throughout the day we're soaking up all these anxieties, and you end the day tense as a result of it. They come through the checkouts and they're obviously under stress and they tend to pass the stress on to us. It, it's quite hard work, it's surprising, you know, how much shopping you lift and put through the checkouts. I mean, you can do about three hours a maximum um, stretch on uh, till, and it is hard work. I think if we're being honest, we have to admit that at some stage in our lives, we all suffer from some stress or strain. A few people find it too much and consequently go to the doctor, and almost certainly they'll come away with a prescription for tranquilizers. Professor Lader has been researching into the whole business of tranquilizers. How widespread is their use, Professor? Well, they're very wide, widely used. About one in six of the adult population take tranquilizers at some time during the course of each year, but they don't take it all the time. Imagine that this pill represents this one in six of the population who are taking tranquilizers. Then about a half take tranquilizers only occasionally. Uh, this proportion, uh, a third, take tranquilizers for courses of treatment, say a month at a time. But there's another proportion, the remainder, a sixth, who are taking tranquilizers every day of the year. And these represent 3% of the adult population. What sort of people are they? Oh, all sorts of people. Um, males uh, take tranquilizers less than females. Females about twice as frequently as uh, males. Their older women tend to take tranquilizers more than younger women. And uh, also there's some relation to social class. So the wives of unskilled workers are more likely to be taking tranquilizers than the wives of the professional people. And in your experience, how stressed are these people who take tranquilizers? Oh, they are very stressed. There's all sorts of stress. And if one looks at these different causes uh, of stress, one finds that financial uh, problems are top of the list, I think especially at the present time. Uh, other problems are general health problems as well. What about the dangers associated with, with taking tranquilizers? Well, in general, they are quite safe drugs in the sense that they have very few side effects. They're very effective. Uh, patients like taking them. But there are some dangers. Uh, the main danger, I think, is that with chronic use, there's some risk of becoming dependent. That is, if the person tries to stop taking a tranquilizer, which they've been on for months or years, they get uh, withdrawal symptoms. They will get symptoms which were not there originally and which are due to the fact that they've become used to taking these tranquilizers. And this is quite a problem. The best estimate that one can give, and we don't have very good information here, we, we desperately need studies, is that about one in 20 of people who start taking tranquilizers will eventually have some problems stopping taking them. Why do you think it is that they are taken on such a widespread scale? I think the reasons are many fold. There are, there are the main reason, I think, is that patients really do find the drugs are helpful, especially with a severe anxiety. It lessens the symptoms, and also it bucks them up a little. They feel brighter and they feel they can cope with life better. Mm. And also, I think the doctors find that it's very easy to prescribe the tranquilizers. It's easy to reach for a prescription uh, pad rather than use other forms of uh, treatment. So what, they're reacting to maybe too much work and uh, they find it, it's the simplest way in a busy practice? That's the story that uh, is generally uh, held, that yes, it's time consuming to use other forms of treatment, but there are some quite simple ways of coping with this. For example, just reassuring the patient and explaining the symptoms is a very useful way of helping the patient cope with that stress. And then the patient learns their own ways of dealing with it.
Professor, thank you very much. We found during the making of this program that many people do indeed have their own special ways of coping with stress. And I went out with the film crew to find out how certain people try to relax. Sit down quietly, read, watch the box, have a drink. Well, I've got a little room of my own. Nobody's allowed to go in there. It's Mum's room. Uh, no shoes, no homework, no nothing. And uh, no television. And I've got a nice glass of sherry. <laughs> I usually just sit down and calm down and then try to start again. Oh, well, I'll go jogging in the evenings. You go jogging? Curse and swear, nobody hears me. <laughs> Satchel, you know? Yes. If I'm at home, I garden. Just disappear for 10, 20 minutes, hide away. And then I'm fine. I like gardening. I've got uh, three old, very old motorcycles. Uh, I refurbish them when it's necessary. Or uh, fiddle about in the shed, bit of woodwork and things like that. You know, get out the wife's way in general. To retract to home and do some modelling, you know, model trains or model making, yeah, by way of diverting all of your concentration into one particular thing and not letting anything else uh, bother you at all. The best way I relax is to get on the piano and hammer away at that. What would you say is the best method of relaxation for you? Uh, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh, you very no. much, Lucy. <laughs> well, there we've seen some different ways of relaxing, some of which are hobbies. But when things really do get too much, where can we turn to for help? We've seen the dangers of tranquilizers, so what are the alternatives? Recently, I went to a Birmingham Health Centre where some doctors are working closely with psychologists to provide a rather special service. We did a study and 15% of our patients who were coming to see us had in fact got psychological problems which were of the sort that the psychologists felt that they could contribute. Uh, and that